Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. I often see comments from viewers pointing out this strange anomaly on the outside of the Great Pyramid, situated on its northeastern angle. It looks like a platform or an entrance to a cave in the man-made pyramid of stone. A number of years ago it was entered into by Egyptologist Bob Breyer and shown on a TV documentary called The Khufu Pyramid Revealed, available on YouTube and linked below. A number of pictures in this video are taken from the documentary. Together with a cameraman, Breyer climbed the pyramid and on reaching the strange anomaly, he showed that there was a somewhat flat platform to stand on. It's quite a striking image and it doesn't look like you're on the Great Pyramid. And at this location, where the northern and eastern sides of the pyramid meet, there is also a small opening. Breyer didn't expect there to be an internal cavity, thinking the notch on the northeastern corner was just that, a notch in the stonework and nothing more. It's not crude like the famous Al Mamun tunnel, it doesn't look like it was worked by ancient tomb robbers, yet the space inside is large. As you can see, you can comfortably stand up. There are no cut marks, no smash blocks, just a platform leading to a cavity that was made on purpose by the pyramid builders. Until Briar went inside, there was no description of the cavity in any book on ancient Egypt. Yet we can see graffiti, so people in antiquity have been inside. The level floor makes it feel like you were meant to be able to go inside, and the wall blocks are arranged in such a way that meant it was clearly meant to look this way. It was a platform and a cavity with a purpose. By shining a torch between the limestone blocks, Briar saw that the cavity deepened, and it seemed to go on for quite some distance, but there was no way to investigate without removing some of the stones. These further cavities were clearly blocked up, either during or post-construction of the pyramid. Briar couldn't make sense of its purpose, why there was a platform on the northeastern corner of the pyramid, and why it opened into a cavity that seems to go even deeper. Was it an accident of construction or not? Well, there was one man that could explain what we are seeing, because it fitted into his pyramid construction hypothesis perfectly. This man is Jean-Pierre Houdin, who I've mentioned before in many videos, and who has, in my opinion, the best model for how the Great Pyramid was built. As I've discussed in previous videos, in his work Jean-Pierre Houdin explains how the Caffre Causeway, and then a ramp from the Caffre Causeway to the Great Pyramid, were used together to get the large granite blocks above the King's Chamber into position, with the aid of a clever counterweight system. In Houdin's theory, this is the whole purpose of the Grand Gallery, which in my current mindset with regards to the Great Pyramid does make sense. Houdan believes that the passages we can go inside today are the constructional or operational shafts and walkways of the Great Pyramid, used by workers when the structure was built. He believes, as do I, that this specific block in the King's Chamber is a concealed entrance, and it leads to a new set of passages, royal passages and chambers of the King, which link up with the Great Pyramid's now concealed main entrance, located here behind the chevron blocks. The block inside the King's Chamber is also not load-bearing and doesn't fit snug against the adjacent blocks. For example, you can even fit a key through the gap. Back to the original and now concealed entrance, and we know there is a large cavity behind the chevron blocks thanks to the work of the Scan Pyramids project, and we also know there is a large void shown here. So, the science seems to underpin Houdin's hypothesis. So how does he explain the platform and cavity that is the subject of this video? It's all to do with the internal ramp hypothesis, a ramp that was used to transport the limestone core blocks as well as the outer casing stones up the pyramid as it grew in height. As it spirals all the way to the top, inside the outer edges of the pyramid, it means that the ramp would still have to be there in its entirety when the capstone was put into place. If true, it means that constructionally, the ramp must still be there today, a few metres behind the outside edge of the pyramid, maybe either filled in with blocks or sand, partly filled in, or actually it could still be open. 
For his internal ramp hypothesis to work, Houdan expected there to be platforms and cavities at various locations on the corners of the pyramid. The internal ramp has a shallow angle, and when blocks reach the corner edges of the Great Pyramid, the ramp would need to rotate by 90 degrees. So, according to Houdan, there would need to be zones designated for rotating blocks. This space would be larger than the width of the ramp, and there would be apparatus like ropes and pulley systems that were fitted to the limestone blocks to help with the lifting and rotating process. Houdan believes that the area we're discussing in this video is precisely that, a turning point for the limestone blocks on their journey up the pyramid. And I think I agree. To add further credence to the work of Houdan, in 1986, scientists conducting a microgravimetric study located a number of low-density zones inside the Great Pyramid. 15% of the mass of the Great Pyramid is missing, and furthermore, when combined on a diagram, these low-density zones form a clear and obvious spiral shape. They are located along the inside edge of the Great Pyramid, producing this picture when we look from above. Looking at the outside of the pyramid, you can also trace faint lines inclined by 7 degrees, which Houdan believes is the spiral ramp. To back up Houdan's theory, 15 kilometers south of Cairo, there is a structure known as the Neu Seir Sun Temple, built 100 years after the reign of Khufu. It was destroyed at the end of the 19th century, but on early architectural drawings, we can see a ramp or corridor inside the temple's outer edge. Houdan went to this site with Bob Breyer and concluded that the corridor was indeed an example of a spiral ramp, showing that this was an Old Kingdom construction method. The science and archaeological observations do seem to back up the theory of Jean-Pierre Houdan. And, in my opinion, there is no better idea for the construction of the Great Pyramid. An idea that satisfies all the evidence in a way like Houdan's does. His idea also means that the casing stones were added to the pyramid as it rose in height, meaning they didn't complete the core of the pyramid in its entirety, and then add the casing stones as a final phase of work. The casing stones were applied gradually, alongside the core masonry. This is shown by analysing the casing stones on the Bent Pyramid, many of which still remain today. We can clearly see the way the casing stones overlap each other, but also the core masonry. Interestingly, these casing stones also show the same polygonal masonry that we see in a number of 4th and 5th dynasty stone mastabas on the Giza Plateau, which I discussed in a previous video. I'll be talking about the polygonal masonry of the Bent Pyramid in a future video. So, it looks like Houdan has cracked the mystery of the Great Pyramid's construction, a straightforward, believable and also highly efficient method that could well have been applied to the other giant pyramids of ancient Egypt. Maybe we should all take a closer look at the other pyramids and try and find more evidence of spiral ramps. As some of you may know, certainly those that run independent channels on YouTube, views are down for most people, as independent channels are being recommended far less in 2020. So, it's thanks to Patreon supporters and the new channel members that I can continue to run this channel, conduct new research and report the latest news. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to you. Those that can't or don't wish to donate, that of course is absolutely fine, and your views are very much appreciated. I also have another channel called Space and Planet, and from time to time I'll be uploading new content. It will also act as a backup channel for ancient architects, so if anything was to go wrong, you could find me on the Space and Planet channel. I have also just started a Teespring merchandise store, and I'll be updating this every week with new designs. Some look good in my opinion, some are funny while some will be tongue in cheek, but sales of merchandise also support me and this channel. Thank you for watching and I'll be releasing more videos next week. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.